Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob, and in this series of videos, we'll be going through SAP Leonardo Internet of Things. In this video, we'll be going through an overview of IoT application enablement, and we'll be looking at what we're going to cover in this eight video series. Now, if you look on the line for SAP IoT application enablement, you'll get our landing page SAP which will basically give you a link to various resources, pricing strategies, capabilities, so on and so forth. Now, as it says, IoT application enablement is a complete set of microservices which are designed to build powerful apps and leverage data storage to deliver real-time insights. Now, these apps are tailored to your IoT. And quite simply, that means that we utilize the SCP Web IDE templates to build those apps. The data for those IoT apps, of course, comes from your IoT service. But in between the IoT service and IoT application enablement is a semantic layer. And we call that a thing. So a thing in the context of IoT is simply an entity or physical object that has a unique identifier. A simple example of this would be a device that has multiple sensors. That device might be placed in a greenhouse and in our video series, the example we're going to have is we're going to have multiple greenhouses or multiple things distributed around the world. So each device within the greenhouse will, of course, have a location. These things have to be modeled so we can utilize the extensible thing modeler within application enablement. Additionally, we can monitor and control changes in those things using event management. And lastly, we can securely share data because we have a sophisticated authorization model so we can control user access. On this page, you'll also see a list of other resources and features of application enablement. If you scroll down, there's a lot more information about pricing and other resources available. An example of one of those Web IDE templates is as follows. Now, what we're essentially going to do in this video series is build two applications. One will be built with a wizard, and this is what it's going to look like. So on the left-hand side, you have your things. On the right-hand side, you have the location of your things, which, of course, have devices attached to them. If I select an analysis page, then, of course, as you can imagine, you're going to get all the sensor data displayed for that specific thing. The thing in our example is going to be a greenhouse which has an IoT device on it which measures things like temperature and humidity. The other app we're going to build is what's called a freestyle app. So this is when you can design what the app looks like. So in this example, I'm choosing which gauges and which analytics I want selected on the page. And then ultimately, when I view the analytic, what I'll be able to see is various values displayed depending on the thing that I select. As you can imagine that we can then drill down on these analytics to get more granular information on all the values in our sensors within our thing or our greenhouse. In the previous video series, we looked at the SAP Leonardo IoT service and some of these concepts. So what are the steps we're going to demonstrate in order to show how IoT application enablement can be used? Well, the first thing we need to do is build a package, which is a container that contains metadata objects, such as what are called thing types and property sets. Within your package, you include your property set. And the property set is where you can decide on the various attributes you want to include about your things. So for example, one of the categories is basic data. So if it's, for example, a greenhouse, you could have the actual name of the greenhouse, or for example, the serial number of the greenhouse. You've also got other categories such as calculated values and measured values. Now, when you've built all these various different types of property set, you then can allocate these property sets or a subset of these property sets to a specific thing type. So again, these objects are reusable. And in our example, you might classify a thing type as greenhouse which means you are going to have multiple different greenhouses at different locations. Ultimately, you then model the things based on your thing type. 
And the difference between a thing and a thing type is that the thing will have a unique ID because it will have values such as a unique name and also, for example, a unique location. And because of this, what I'm going to show you is how we can change the location of your various things. So using the RESTful API and Postman, we're going to update both the thing and the thing location. Just to show you that, for example, if your, your actual thing is not a greenhouse, for example, it could be a bike or a truck and that truck moves, you can keep the location and attributes about that thing updated. When we've done that, of course, then we're going to use the web IDE and use two templates to build some applications. The first one we're going to use is our IoT application, which enables you to build up an application in a wizard-like manner. So you choose the front page, the subsections of the page, and you click on a wizard. The other option is we're going to use another template, which is called IoT Freestyle, and this lets you choose where on the actual analytic you want your various objects to be placed. Architecturally, as you know, when you connect your sensors, whether directly through Gateway Cloud or the Gateway Edge, they will, the data will be loaded into our IoT service. So in order for our IoT application enablement to connect, we have a data ingestion pipeline. And under the scenes, this is done with Kafka. And this means if you want that, you can access your IoT data within SAP HANA. So when you're actually building your things, you're using the SAP Fiori Launchpad, where you build those property sets, things, and thing types. And then what you'll use is the SAP Web IDE to access some IoT templates in order to build your IoT applications. Ultimately, because this data has been ingested into SAP IoT application enablement, you're then possible to utilize other SAP services like business rules, workflow, and SAP integration to connect your IoT data to other tools, whether they're SAP or non-SAP, such as S4HANA, Hybris, Ariba, and of course, other types as well. So in the next video, we're going to revisit what we completed in our IoT video series by doing some device onboarding using the IoT cockpit.